New York Knicks fans that honestly like watch this team this season, and we hate to be these fans, we really do, because we root with our hearts. Like, we want the New York Knicks to win games. We think they're going to win every game when we watch. Obviously, we we root with our brains as well, or at least some Knicks fans out there. But true Knicks fans, or some Knicks fans, I should say, I'm not going to tell you how to root for your team. It's just like, I saw this coming from a mile away. It's like, too good to be true. Too good to be true. It's a close game entering the fourth quarter. We're down one. We freaking collapse. RJ scoring efficiently throughout the entire game. He's working downhill. He even hit a very difficult fadeaway jumper. He hit a three in this ball game. But in the fourth quarter, we just never make wise decisions with the basketball. We collapse defensively. We can't rebound. You know, we missed some free throws in this game. Not saying all of them were in the fourth quarter. But I like the way RJ was playing offensively. No one deserves credit at all on defense. Everyone was absolutely atrocious. It was disgusting how much room we were giving DeAndre Hunter, even when going on a run. The dribble penetration we allowed. And I understand no Mitchell Robinson out with that right shoulder injury. And he did get surgery on Thursday. He's going to be reevaluated in a few weeks. And it's going to be out even longer. So I knew the dribble penetration was going to be an issue with Trey Young, with DeJounte Murray, the screen and roll. But we're running drop coverage. We're running freaking drop coverage, which makes no sense at all. Because I was frustrated with Jericho Sims. I'm like, no, I shouldn't be frustrated with Jericho Sims. The coach should be putting him in the best position to be successful. Jericho Sims is a young player. He shouldn't know better. He needs to learn in this league. But that's a terrible display of coaching by Tom Thibodeau. There's literally like 10 plays in a row that they're like, they can't defend the screen and roll. DeJounte Murray, utilize the screen, get to your mid-range, get to your push shot. Trey Young, utilize your utilize the screen, get to that floater. Or try to lob it up to someone or try to get, get an easy bucket in the interior. So the worst case scenario happened definitely at the beginning of the game. But yeah, RJ was having this good game scoring the ball. It's just like... It's just scripted the way this team plays in the fourth quarter. You know, RJ forces a couple shots we didn't need. He did hit that three at the beginning of that fourth quarter, but a push shot we didn't need. He forced the issue too much, and this overall team forces the issue too much. But credit to Randall, though. When the New York Knicks started off that third quarter atrocious because we shot 71%. This is too good to be true, and we saw it coming from a mile away. But you You could see the fourth quarter. You could put into that as well. The reason why I saw this coming from a mile away is because this isn't isn't a consistent offensive group. The Knicks shot 71% from the field in that first half. You have Jalen Brunson, who's scoring at a solid level. You have Julius Randle cooking. You have RJ, who can't miss. He's 6 of 6 from the field. He's able to get whatever he wants in the interior. You have Obi Toppin, who's coming to the basket, knocked down a three. Amanda quickly producing off the bench. And Amanda quickly is the only guy we could freaking count on to score the ball off the bench. Obi Toppin's barely played, so he's rusty. And he definitely missed some threes in the second half. I thought he was atrocious defensively. He needs to learn a post move as well. He just looks absolutely lost in the post. He doesn't look strong in the post at all. But... Who would have thought we went from having good depth to our depth freaking sucks. They're going to compete defensively, but offensively, it's just so damn inconsistent. But yeah, you can't count on Obi to score at such a high level when he, uh, he's he been not playing a lot of games. But yeah, the first half, we're scoring at a high level, but the defense is just absolute shit. It, it's just so bad. Both these teams are able to score at such a high level. We're up three entering halftime. And I knew this wasn't good because I'm like, toe-to-toe with the Hawks? Can we count on on the Knicks to score basketballs down the stretch? I don't think so. The Knicks need to pick it up defensively. They do. I don't trust us to go toe-to-toe with Trey Young scoring the ball and DeJounte Murray down the stretch. And if Bogdanovich gets going, we're cooked. And Bogdanovich definitely did get going. But it took us four minutes to score the basketball in that third quarter. The offense is extremely stagnant. We can't get a stop defensively. So the worst-case scenario happens. We're down double digits. Everyone's contributing for the Atlanta Hawks. If it's Trey Young, if it's DeJounte Murray, they're playing good defense. If it's a Kongwu or Capella out there, on the floor, DeAndre Hunter is starting to even get cooking in this game as well. Just everyone's starting to contribute. But when you thought we're down in the dumps and you thought we're just completely done, Julius Randle puts his team on his freaking back. You know, he had that crazy four-point play. He's putting his head down again to the rack. You know, he hit some threes in this game. He did a brilliant job scoring the ball. And Randle's such a frustrating player because he'll show you brilliance of scoring the basketball. And then times that it's just like, oh my gosh, what is he doing out there? Because he's kind of a hot and cold player. And I don't mean in games, like consecutive games or like streaky 
like he's good one game, bad the next game, and then good again. I mean, like he's streaky through four quarters. Like he's very good scoring the ball in that first quarter, but in the second quarter, I think he's pressing too much. You have to realize you have teammates. You're not moving the ball. It just really comes down to basketball IQ with this dude on both ends of the floor. Didn't even put a hand up on Hunter, though, when he was cooking, but he was one of the main reasons we got back in the game when we cut it down to like a one-point lead at one time at one point, a five or four point lead, but the defense was so atrocious, if it was the interior, if it was the perimeter, it was just straight up god awful, and the problem we have with this team as well, is that when RJ is like on fire in that first half, we don't consistently feed him, or whenever someone's consistently on fire, outside of Randall, we don't consistently feed them, and Brunson obviously, because he always has the ball in his hands, he is a point guard, by the way, Brunson, I know he finished with eight assists, but he literally could have more assists, there's times I'm like, Brunson, I understand he's a very talented scorer of the ball. He had that crazy and one, which was kind of a momentum changing shot as well. But sometimes you have to realize, like, let me make those basic reads out there on the floor and let me act like a point guard a little more. Again, I love Brunson, just something he needs to clean up on. But we allow offensive rebounds. We mi- we continue to miss free throws. We just don't move the ball. Like, we need to feed the hot hand. You have to realize. We're, we don't have a superstar on this team. We have to realize that. And we have to play as a collective unit. And the New York Knicks just do not do that at all. But we're down one point entering the fourth quarter. We just absolutely collapse. Just absolutely collapse. The def- This is one of our worst defensive performances. 139 points. You go from being down one point to being down freaking double digits. And obviously they took out their guys like 130 in the fourth quarter. And the Knicks took out our guys around the same time. Tom Thibodeau threw in the white flag. But or the white towel, whatever you want to call it, just, just wide open shots, like Bogdanovich was cooking us, Hunter was cooking us, it didn't matter who was out there, they're like, Trey Young freaking owns us, and we were on a winning streak against the Hawks, I'm not taking anything, like we're on a winning streak against them when it came to playing in Atlanta, I believe that was like four or five games in a row before the Hawks beat us, but Trey Young always kills us, like DeJounte Murray was hitting some difficult ass fadeaways, mid-range jumpers, read the passing lanes very good, we had some turnovers as well in that third quarter, but we never have guys that are on fire at the same time. It's just like one guy's on fire for one quarter, someone's on on fire for the next quarter. We don't consistently play as a group and as a collective unit. It's just it's so frustrating because when we're up like eight points at one point in that first half, it's just like we need to build upon this because if it's a close game entering the fourth quarter, you just simply can't trust them to move the ball. You can't trust them to grab a big time rebound at a big spot, make their free throws, make their three pointers. This team just really has no true identity, in my opinion. This team is extremely frustrating. The Hawks were better. They deserved to win. They did adjust when it came to their defense. It was better at, le- at least at the start of the third quarter. They set the tone. New York Knicks had their chances, and they were just simply bad. They were bad when it mattered, and it just feels like every time we're going to choke in the fourth quarter, we're going to choke in the fourth quarter. And I don't mean when it comes to final minute. I mean just like the entire fourth we don't have guys we can consistently count on to make wise decisions. Brunson will get big time buckets, but like when it comes to really, really being clutch, can we count on someone on this team? Can we really count? Like RJ has shown like a small handful of moments, but it's also because we don't consistently give him the ball in those moments. It's always Brunson. It's always Randall. Randall could be brilliant for three quarters of basketball, but can we really trust him when it comes to the closing minutes of a game? But obviously, it's on the coach as well. Like set up an offense that's ready for the for the mind, for the final like minute of the game as well. But Bronson obviously will hit some momentum shots in that fourth quarter. But then we won't get stops, and then it becomes this training buckets thing where they could be fatigued in the fourth quarter. But I don't think anyone played forty minutes tonight. I don't think so. So let me know down below your thoughts. Frustrating. Peace out, y'all.